Chapter 3, Structure of Crystalline Solids. So today we're going to take a look at uh, structure. Last time we took a look at the atomic structure, otherwise the bonding between atoms. We talked about uh, primary bond types. Hopefully you can name three. And we talked about secondary bond types. Today we're going to talk about the atomic arrangement of atoms. How do the atoms pack to form a crystal structure? And the reason we're interested in uh, structure is that structure directly affects properties. And then ultimately we're going to see, as we move through the course, many different ways of processing a material. And the processing ultimately will affect structure, so ultimately affect pr properties. So understanding the structure-property relationship and how processing affects structure would help us tailor materials for specific uses. So you can, you can grow your own crystal structures uh, if you want. Alum is a good system to grow. It grows very nice big crystals, and these are an alum is just a spice in your grocery store. One of the things you notice when you grow a single crystal, and say this piece here is a single crystal, and here's another one. Each of these is a single crystal. So all the atoms in these different pieces have the same structure, and they're all oriented in the same way. One of the things you'll notice is that they're angles here will show up and repeat in the different structures. So the lengths of edges might change in length, but the angles are always the same. So that implies there's some order to the arrangement of the atoms. The two types that we're going to look at is what's called face-centered cubic and body-centered cubic. That's where we're going to focus this class. And you can see many of the common metals have one of these two types of structures. We're also going to talk just very briefly about the hexagonal closed pack system, but we're going to focus all of our calculations on the face-centered FCC or BCC body-centered. So let's first take a look at the face-centered cubic. As you can see, the face-centered cubic structure, first it's a cube, cubic, so we've got atoms forming the cube here. If I look at the uh, positions of the atom centers, and then at the face of each cube, you have an atom, so face-centered cubic. There's another view of that, and this is showing you what the true unit cell is, that is the repeat unit, and it's showing you here now that we are going indeed from the atom centers. And so that's what's actually repeated, so if we continue to add in more and more pieces, we can see that we build up this face-centered cubic structure. All right, so a couple of things we want to know about when we're looking at the structures. We want to know about how efficient the atoms are packed into the structure, and how much of that is how much of this unit cell is space, and how much of it is atom. And we want to know something about how to find the length of the cube edge, A, in terms of the radius, R, of our atoms. Okay, so first thing, let's go ahead and take a look at the number of atoms per unit cell. Okay, we have listed here four. And how do we get that? Uh, so we've got, if we take a look at our cell up here, you can see that we've got a half of an atom here at the face, okay, and there are six faces times one half of an atom for each face center, so that's three atoms, and then notice that the atoms on the corners are actually an eighth of an atom, and there's eight corners. So that's one atom, and so we have four complete atom volumes in one of our unit cells. So we've got four atoms per area cubed of our unit cell, right? Our volume of our unit cell is just A cubed. So let's find A, the edge length here. So what we're going to do to find A is we want to take a look at our space filling model again and locate where the atoms are touching. So notice in the face-centered system, the atoms are touching 
along the face diagonals. And so what that tells me is that I've got one, two, three, four R, four radii, and relative to A, if I draw my right triangle here, I got A, A, and so that four R there, the hypotenuse, is then just A square root two. <clears throat> okay, so that gives me that A is equal to four R over the square root two. So it's just another way of writing 2r square root 2. I'm going to leave it in this 4r square root 2 format because you see this will be uh, similar to what we see for the body centered cubic structure. So I like this format a little better. All right, so the atomic packing factor here, how well do we pack, is just simply the volume of atoms over the volume of the unit cell. Okay, so it's the fractional amount of atom per total volume. We said the volume of atoms, well, one atom is four-thirds pi r cubed, and we've got four atoms total in the unit cell. The volume of our unit cell is a cubed, and a, remember, we already have it written up here, a is equal to 4r square root of 2. Okay, so I'm going to put that in, 4r square root 2 cubed. All right, so you just go ahead and simplify these numbers. The r's cancel out. Plug the rest of this in your calculator, and you're going to get 0.74. So in other words, this is 74% atom, 26% then is space in this unit cell. This is actually the best that we can do, and so this is referred to as a close packed structure. The body sending cubic structure, again, we've got a cube. Okay, we always call the edge length A. But now we don't have atoms in the face, but we have an atom sitting here in the body center. So body centered cubic. It's non close packed. It's building up my structure. The atomic packing factor now, or the packing efficiency, is 68%. There's now two atoms in this unit cell, and the edge length now is 4r over the square root of 3. And I'm going to leave these for you um, to drive yourself. And then this is the uh, right triangle that's going to help you with this. Okay, So edge length a. This is across the face, so that's a square root 2. And then this is our body diagonal. And I guess I'll go ahead and give that to you, a square root of 3. Right, body diagonal of a cube.